Hey guys, it's Miss Arlequin, and in this video, we're going to be identifying and analyzing editing techniques that filmmakers use to help them develop their storylines. So in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on film editing, specifically why it's done and some of the techniques that film editors can use. By knowing the different types of techniques an editor can use, we can then look at film and film clips more critically, the same way that we look at text. Remember that a film is another type of text. And just like we look at the author's craft when we're looking at written pieces, we want to look at the filmmaker's craft and think about why they made the decisions they made, how using certain techniques can help them develop certain central ideas and certain themes. So we're talking about editing. Basically an edit is what joins two shots together. So I'm going to show you a clip from a very famous film called Citizen Kane. And it has a few interesting edits in it. So I want you, as you're watching the clip, to look for where one shot begins and the next one ends. We'll have to tell him now. Yes. I'll sign those papers now, Mr. Thatcher. You people seem to forget that I'm the boy's father. It's going to... All right, so when we analyze a clip like the one we just watched, there's a couple things you want to think about. You want to think about where the edits are actually happening. That's the first step, identifying the edits. Then you want to really question it. Why do you think the editor moved from the first shot to the second? Why did they use that specific type of edit? What did that edit communicate to the audience? So was there a change of place, a passage of time, a different point of view? Is the editor trying to make a connection between the first shot and then the second shot and using the edit or the cut to actually show that? So for example, a director might first show a shot of the outside of a house, then the inside. So the viewers will know where they are when they go inside. It's kind of like establishing the setting. A director might film one person's face as they talk and then move to another person's face to show their reaction. That happens a lot in conversations. So now what is the purpose of film editing and what is the role of a film editor on a film project? Well, basically editing is taking different shots that have been filmed and piecing them together to tell the story. So the most uh, common type of edit is just a cut. When you cut, you're basically just taking two pieces of film, you're splicing them together so that the film cuts from one image to another. It's kind of actually pretty abrupt because there's no real transition between one cut, one um, image and another. It just cuts. So it actually is exactly the way it sounds. I think you'd better explain yourself, Wadsworth. Me? Why me? Who would want to kill Right here, we actually see a cut. Now there's another cut. Here's another cut. You can see it's very abrupt. It's going right from one image to another. Next, we have a type of edit called a fade. It can be to or from black or white. A fade could begin in darkness and, a gradual, and then gradually the scene becomes brighter. That's usually called a fade in. Or you can have an image that gradually gets darker and that's a fade out. Obviously, a fade in would be better at the beginning of scenes and a fade out would be better at the end of scenes. A fade often implies that time has passed, or like I said, it could signify the end of a scene. All right, so here we're gonna see a fade out and now a fade in. All right, next we have a type of edit called the dissolve. A dissolve is a kind of fade in where one image is slowly replaced by another. And it's a really good edit when you wanna create a connection between images. You can see from these still images here that the painting is slowly dissolving in this middle image, there's like the two images are kind of on top of each other until it fades into the next image, which is the water. Next, we have a type of edit called a wipe. 
A wipe is where a new image wipes off the previous image. A wipe is a lot more fluid than a cut, and it's quicker than a dissolve. The movie Star Wars used a lot, a lot of wipes. It was one of George Lucas's, the director and creator's, favorite types of edits. Sorry about the mess. Yeah. All right, next we have a group of editing techniques known as shot reverse shot. This usually is just cuts from one shot to another, but the name for this group of cuts is shot reverse shot. It's the shot of one subject, then another, and then back to the first. And this type of editing technique is usually used for conversation or reaction shots. It's the way you can tell that this character is talking to that character. And it just keeps like the continuity and the fluidity of the scene. Here we see shot reverse shot between the human character and the dogs. Every time it goes back and forth, you see it's just cuts. That's standard shot reverse shot. All right, next we have a type of edit called cross cutting. Cross cutting is when you cut between actions that are happening simultaneously. So this technique is also called parallel editing because you have parallel action, just like parallel lines, they're side by side. The action and cross cutting scenes are happening, quote, side by side. Now you might use this type of editing to create tension or suspense, and it's excellent for forming a connection between scenes, like the clip we're gonna watch from the movie Inception. All right, so here we see the action cutting from the action in the first location now to this character in the hotel room, uh, hotel hallway. And then it's going to cut back um, in a moment to the action of the guy driving in the van, that chase scene. And now this entire scene is filled with just cross-cutting between these two important sequences. The characters who are trying to escape through the car chase and the characters who are fighting in the hotel. And those two events are connected to each other in the narrative. They're actually trying to get to a certain location before this guy in the hallway can complete the mission that he's on. And if they don't get there in time, the whole plan that they have is going to be for nothing. All right, next we have an eyeline match. An eyeline match is where you cut to an object and then to a person. And this type of editing technique shows what a person seems to be looking at, and it can reveal a character's thoughts. You can actually take just shots of people staring into a distance, and through the editing, you can make a connection into what they are, quote unquote, looking at or thinking about. Here in this clip from The Sons of the Lambs, we see Jodie Foster. It cuts to this object, which is going to end up being a head. She's investigating crimes, and that eyeline match shows what she was looking at when it cuts to the object. Okay, for our final editing technique, we're looking at a match on action. A match on action is a cut which splices two different views of the same action together at the same moment in the same movement, making it seem to continue uninterrupted. So we're going to see in this clip um, how a match on action can show, again, two cuts. It's really from two different cameras in a way because you're going to have the camera that's facing one direction and the camera that's facing another. You cut them together and it seems like it's just this continuous movement. A match on action could also be the same camera, just the camera's moving. But instead of following and having the camera rolling as you move the camera, you just use edits to cut. So the match on action might be the character's going to the door, and then you cut, and the camera's a little bit closer, and now you actually see the character opening the door. Then you have another cut, and it's the next uh, image where the door's almost open. And then you cut again, and you move the camera, and you see the character walking through the door. So all of those cuts follow the character through their action. It matches through the action. All right, in this clip, we're going to see the match on action right here. You see where it went from the guy swinging his sword, and then it cut, and you saw him swinging it again. All right, so now that we've gotten our basic introduction to editing techniques, we are ready to actually start looking at a film in class and seeing if we can identify these techniques being used and how we think they are helping to develop the narrative.